Can we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father God, we are thankful Thank you. that your spirit has shown up here. Amen. You have lit on our shoulders and we just appreciate the fact that with all the myriad of duties that you have, you didn't forget about your children. Amen. You made a covenant with us and we're thankful Thank you. that you loved us in spite of us. So we thank you today. Thank you. And we give you praise Amen. and honor. Amen. 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 I tossed and turned all night. Because you know, when you got to speak before the people of God, you, you got to know what you're talking about. <laughs> It's just wonderful just to be in the house of God. Yeah. Somebody get the sixth chapter of Samuel. Got it? Read the 16th verse of the sixth chapter of Samuel. And that ark of the Lord came to the city of David. Yeah. My cow, Saul's daughter, looked through a window, and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him mm -hmm. in her heart. And then 17. And they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Wow. I want to use as a subject matter today, there's a story behind my dance. somebody there's a story behind your dance. I know where I've been. And you know where you have been. And the things that you've gone through. And God lets you know how to get through it. Everybody that knows how they got through a thing ought to know what to do when they enter into the house. There is a story behind my bed. I got Lord have mercy. I think that I can safely say that all of us are captive of our culture. Come on, come on, come on. And we are expositors of our experiences. And whether we like it or not, it is not us to drag the baggage of yesterday and yesteryears into this situation. Some of the baggage is good. Some of the baggage is bad. I found that a part of maturing is being able to distinguish the good from the bad. And how sad and tragic that there are many of us that have not learned how to distinguish ourselves from the aspects of our yesteryears. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. <laughs> we have now embarked upon a culture that is afraid of the word sanctification. Rather than 
understand that it is a biblical word and not a denominational word. But we must understand that every child of God must be sanctified. We are called upon to develop. We are called upon to mature. Yes, sir. And whenever growth is not taking place, there's only one thing that can be said about that individual. And that is, that individual is retarded. Hmm. Oh, Are we guilty of spiritual retardation? Do we honestly believe that our way is the only way? Have we become so trapped in tradition? Have we become so captive with our culture? Oh, my Lord. Are we so caged in yesterday? So much so that we are unable to see any other authentic movement. Yes, sir. We embrace and believe what we need. And I thank God that I love the way we worship. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I believe that. I love the way we worship. And I'm not ashamed of anything that we do. In New Haven, I go to the restaurants and I go to the ministers' meetings there. And I've told all the ministers there to say, oh, hey. When they greet me, and if you don't believe me, come with me. When they greet me, they say, all hell, dear. Yes, sir. Is it well with me? That's right. Man, as Percy told you, that's the password. Yes, <laughs> Too many of us have changed God. And we have confined God within the narrow boundary of our box. Lord have mercy. But God is bigger than that. Lord have mercy. He is God all by himself. Somebody said he don't need nobody else. But I want to talk to you today about King David. King David. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me give you some of his portfolio. We've been talking about David all our lives. Born in Palestine, in God's outdoor university, where his heart was his textbook. And his sheep was his classmates. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. You know David. Uh -huh. David had now gone to the house of Obed Edom. Right. And he's there on a particular mission. Yeah. He's there to fetch the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And to bring it back to its rightful place. Mama. And if you know history, the journey begins in the house of Obed Edom. That's right. And travels the distance to the city of David. Yes, sir. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Some call it Zion. Yes, sir. So that means Jerusalem. There's three names that it is called. Yeah, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Zion, and the city of David. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the author of 2 Samuel is quick to record that all along the journey, from the house of Obed-Edom, all the way to Jerusalem, 
Worship is taking place. Come on, Bishop. I, I just want to paint a picture here. Let me pull the car over and tell you something. <laughs> Worship is not confined to these four walls. Worship does not have any geographical distinction. Worship can take place anywhere, anytime. You, able, you ought to be able to worship God anyway. You ought to let people see you coming out of the supermarket. Talking about home. In the parking lot of the supermarket. Thank you, Lord. On your porch at your house. Let somebody see you praising God. The text says from Obed Edom to the city of Jerusalem, there are blurring trumpets. I wish I could paint this picture. You're doing it. David, the Bible says, lifts up his linen ephod. Lord, have mercy. And he begins to worship as he's coming down the road. The trumpets are blurring. Yeah, they are. I see. The entourage is behind him. Come on, yes, sir. Come on. And he's coming down the road, yes. prancing, yes. My, my, my. dancing. Come on, dancing. Oh, yes. have mercy. Yes. But yes. let me tell you something about David. David was always in place. Crown was always situated on his head. The golden robe was always flowing, exhibiting what perfection he was measured with. David was cuffed, golden slippers, had never been tarnished or tainted by the dust of the road. The scepter was in, the, uh, of power was in his hand. But on this journey, David starts to lose it. I hear it. I hear it. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> his garment is no longer on his shoulder. Yes, sir. But it's almost off of his shoulder. Yes, sir. The scepter of power is no longer in his hand. Mama. And the golden slippers are all dirty and dusty. Mama. Lord, have mercy. And the, Lord, the writer says that he lifted up his linen ephod and he's dancing all the way from Obed Edom's house to Jerusalem. My Lord, right? But now, but now, his wife peers from the window, from the palace, and she sees David cutting up outside. Lord have mercy. And the behavior, she says, of my husband, she considered it a bit undignified, less sophisticated for a king. It is not the kind of a behavior a king should engage in. The record states that David ceased from dancing. And you see, when you have victory, you want to bring victory home. So while David was dancing, he wanted to bring all of this victory home to his home. So he gets ready to go into his home. And Macau, his wife, well, she meets him at the door. Yes, it does. Well, <laughs> and she said, David. Uh huh. Come on. Come David. Pack a picture. You've embarrassed me today. Yeah. But <laughs> you're out in the streets dancing. Yeah. And lo, my Lord. She says, 
All of those girls were lusting after you. That's what she said. And you were acting like some lunatic outside. But I can see David. But I am faith. Said to his wife, Come on in the bedroom, honey. I've got something to say to you. There's a story behind my name. He sat her down. Yes, sir. And he said, let me tell you a little stuff. Come on. All right. I was dancing, but it just didn't stop here. Come on. When I was just 12 years old, a man by the name of Simon Come on. came to my daddy's house, Jackson. Come on. And he said, Jesse, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need somebody yeah. that I must anoint the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, have mercy. Right. And Jesse showed him all of his son that went Lord, to the exercise room every yeah. day. Yeah. And showed them muscle. Yeah. And let everybody know that they were in shape. Yeah. Yeah. But Sam, that's what we need. We need some sandals now. Yeah. Yeah. He said, what you call it? Samuel said to Jesse, yes, haven't you got another son? You see, what, you, yes, you see the instinct that a, yes, that a prophet has? Yes, Have, haven't you got another son? Yes, he said, yes, I got another son, but he's just 12 years old. He got a of sheep. Yes, Samuel said, go get him. Yes, go get him. Yes, sir. And when, you know, when they went to God, David, you never leave the sheep the one that went to get him had to stay there. Yeah. And tell the sheep. Come on. Well, David went to the house. And when he got to the house, there was no words exchanged, but the oil that was in the vessel. And David said to his wife, not only that, but all of my brothers got jealous of me because I was dead. And he said, I had to deal with that. I almost went out of my mind because my brothers were against me. But I survived. We need some survivors in the house today. Not only that, he said Israel was at war. And they were afraid of the enemy. Yes, sir. And David said, Well, look, let me handle this situation. That's right. And they said, You must be out of your mind. You haven't had any training. Right. You don't know what to do. Yeah. David said, there was a time when a lion attacked me. I don't know how, but I had the strength to take care of yes. you. A bear the same way. Yes, sir. I know one thing, if a bear comes out, out of these woods around here, we'd be running. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. David took care of that bear. Then he said to his 
wife. He said, listen, sweetheart. There's a story behind my dad. Yes, he says, uh, I married you, and you were Saul's daughter. And when the women started praising and singing my praises, your daddy got mad. And he said, he got so mad, he was a king. He got so mad that he took a javelin and threw it at me. And I was able to do it. There's a story. And then when I went into the temple, yes, sir. and I ate of the shoe bread, uh -huh. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, they told me, you have no right to be eating that shoe bread from the temple. Come on, Bishop. And what they did, every soldier that was with David, they killed him. But David said, I survived. I survived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. They didn't see that. Mm -hmm. You heard about it, have you? Work with us, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that was it. Yeah. They came up against David again. Oh, yes, sir. And David said, the whole army came. Yes, sir. Into the city. Right. He said, but I was able to survive. Yeah. I was able to survive. Thank you, God. Lord, have mercy. My God. But you know, there's more to the story. Yeah. David said, one night when you and I were sleeping, yeah. the king sent some men to kill me. Yeah. And you, he said to his wife, Macal. You love me so much until you put me in a basket and you lowered me out of the window so that I could escape out of the city. And he said, I survived. We need some survivors in this place today because I know that you have come up against some things. I know you have experienced some problems. But you can be a survivor. Because David was a survivor. Yes, sir. Oh, have mercy. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, he said, not only that, honey, but I came up against a Philistine by the name of Goliath. Oh, yeah. my, my. And you see, you have no business trying to take care of a giant if you haven't had any training. <laughs> Theologians tell me that David could take his sling and hit a dime at 35 feet away. <laughs> and he said when he came up against the Goliath, he said, I went by, by the brook and I picked up five stones. <laughs> Five smooth stones. And I put them in my sling. Yes, sir. And I, I kept maneuvering to get into the right position. Because I'm looking at the giant up on the hill. Come on. Uh, so I gotta get in position. Come on. So when he got in the right position, he took that sling. And there was only one opening in the giant's arm. Yes, sir. And when he swung that sling, he found that dying like opening. Kill the giant. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. Right. My God took his sword, yeah. his giant sword, out of his hand and cut his head. Lord have mercy. Ain't God something? Yes, sir. We need to be survivors. Yes, sir. You know, everybody thinks that everything is going to be all smooth. But things are not always going to be smooth. 
you're going to come up against some things that you didn't expect. My life. God have mercy. How many here uh, paid their uh, rent for they left home? Sir. <laughs> that means these people, that means some left them. Uh, 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 uh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> spent some money to come up here. And I'm praying to God that he will replenish what you have spent to come to this pastor. God 
there should be a story behind your dance. That's right. All right. It may, not, it may not be something that I know about, but you must know about it. There's a star. Oh. Behind our day. Lord have mercy. When the four and twenty elders were sitting on the throne. Lord have mercy. Come on, brothers. They were looking for somebody. All right. Wasn't they looking for somebody? To open the book. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they couldn't find nobody. But now, the Bible does not say that a bishop well, or an evangelist at large yeah. or an evangelist, but look at how important the elders are. There's a book, and then there's another one. Another. <laughs> and somebody said, regardless of how much we praise, regardless of how much we sing, regardless of how much money we give to the church, you better pray that your name is written in the Your name got to be in that book. And before I sit down, I have to say something about Jesus. Because he's our Savior. When he got up, I can see him now making his journey down in heaven. If he wants these keys, he got to fight for them. Yes, but I heard Jesus say, 